On the news, UK tags IPOB as terrorist group, bars members from asylum. President Buhari declines pleas to release IPOB leader, says court will decide his fate. And more presidential aspirants flawed 2023 presidential race, less than a year to elections. We're glad to have you join us on News Now. I am Fola Shade Ogurinde. Authorities in the United Kingdom have reportedly excluded members of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, and some other secessionist groups from seeking asylum in their country. In its updated asylum policy published in May, the UK explained that it took the decision as a result of the recent activities of IPOB members, as reported in Nigeria. The British government explained that IPOB had been proscribed as a terrorist group by the federal government and that members of the groups and its paramilitary wing, the Eastern Security Network, have reportedly committed human rights violations. To this end, the UK added that um, the said persons who commit human rights violations must not be granted asylum. Meanwhile, President Mohamed Bari on Friday has uh, told Southeast leaders that the court will determine the fate of pro-separatist leader in Namdekanu. He said this during a meeting with leaders from the region at the new government house in Abakaliki, the state capital. Buhari Wiznebo, for a two-day walking visit, was reacting to a demand by leaders of the region who pleaded with him to release Kanu and other Igbo uh, youths in detention across the country. I have listened carefully to the various appeals from the elders to the traditional leaders regarding a wide range of options. And as I have said previously, this matter remains in the full view of the courts where it will be properly educated. My worry is for our hardworking and innocent civilians for whom life is already tough and would like to just go out and earn a decent, honest living. I have never believed in IPOB method of oppression. I disagree with them. I will never agree with them. But we have gotten ourselves to a very terrible and pitiable situation. And uh, some of us were warning that we could get to this situation. And some were playing politics with it. Mr. President, you are at this crossroads. I've been to you and I begged you for a political solution. Surprisingly and graciously, you granted that. And you said that our people could initiate that. And of course, at the forefront by Namde Carlos' lawyer. We've made all the efforts for the Ohanese to kickstart that. It's not for the governor. So I'm saying that Mr. President had already granted a political solution to be initiated. And so we call on President of Ohanese, you know, to stop delaying this and not allow politics to come into it. Let him boldly meet with, uh, you know, our father Ambazulike, the Khan chairman, chairman traditional rulers, and a few other people, and with the lawyer from Namdekalo, to initiate this. And I believe that a listening president, our father, will listen to that. As preparations for the 2023 general elections pick up pace, the number of aspirants contesting the presidency seat continues to swell by the day. Presently, the number of aspirants who have either collected forms or indicated interest to contest for the presidential ticket of the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, will climb to 23, even though 17 have actually collected forms to their full presidential ticket. Meanwhile, the central bank governor, Gordon Emefele, has reportedly picked up the expression of interest and nomination forms of the All Progressives Congress, APC, for the 2023 elections. Also, former Zamfara State Governor Sani Yerima has joined the presidential race. 
Well, joining me to discuss this further is political affairs analyst uh, Nelson Ekujimi. Thank you very much for joining us. Now, this is the first time in Nigeria's history that we would see this number of aspirants running for the seat of the president. What do you think is going on? Well, thank you very much. Just like uh, many Nigerians who are wondering what really is going on, I think it shows clearly that our uh, democratic space is being expanded the more. And uh, don't forget, the fact also remains that uh, for quite a long time, and this is the first time that an incumbent will not, will not be really contesting. So in that way, it has expanded the scope of aspirants vying to take over from him. And definitely, if democracy is about the people, I think we must commend ourselves that you know, our democracy is being deepened by this mass participation of aspirants who are vying for the top job in Nigeria. Now, of course, uh, mixed reactions have um, greeted this uh, development. Uh, while some believe uh, more aspirants are necessary for Nigeria's political landscape, uh, others believe that uh, there's more going on. Uh, what do you make of this? Well, I, for me, like uh, we used to say, the more the merrier. In this case, democracy is about people's participation. And if many people are coming out who are eminently qualified to do so, but as, uh, as we speak... Almost all the persons who are coming out are persons who, have, who we know meets the requirements according to the Constitution of Nigeria. And so we should welcome them and we should encourage them that you know, they should keep up the spirit of good sportsmanship when the event eventually happens at the primaries of the two major political parties and whoever emerges as the winner, uh, they should go home and you know, congratulate one another. But most importantly, we must recognize the mood of the country, which is about the shift of power to the south because the incumbent president Mohamed Buhari has been in the saddle for the past uh, two times of eight years and we know he comes from the northern part of nigeria now is the turn of the south to do to you know to take it you know it's it's uh, shot at the top job and we hope the parties will respect that gentleman agreement they will respect the mood of the country political affairs analyst uh, nelson ekujimi thank you very much for your contribution and still in politics, ahead of the upcoming elections, women have been advised to actively participate in the selection of party flag bearers during party primaries. This call was made by women for the Southwest Agenda for Ashiwaju Swaga Group during an event held in Lagos while drumming their support for the emergence of Bola Tunubu as president of Nigeria in 2023. A correspondent, Miri Kanu, tells us more in this report. It is the season of politicking across Nigeria as the 2023 general elections draw closer and the women folk are not left out of the process. As part of the process leading to the election, women from the southwestern states converged in Lagos to throw their weight behind the presidential aspiration of the former governor of Lagos State and also add their voices to the issues affecting the country. But different aspirants show an interest to replace President Muhammad Buhari at the expiration of his tenure in May 2023. The women say they want a president who has the interest of women at heart, hence their support for the former governor of Lagos State, Bola Ahmed Tunubu. This is somebody we've tested and trusted with little or nothing during um, his tenure as um, Lagos State Governor. He single-handedly raised Lagos State's GPR. E IGR, sorry. And then um, we all know what, what happened that period. While um, former President Obasa Joe was trying to deal with Lagos State, he didn't relent in his efforts. So somebody that can do that, if given the opportunity, I'm sure he's going to do better with Nigeria. All that he has done in the past, while he was the governor of Lagos State, and even thereafter, he did not sit back. He's been monitoring the affair of Lagos State, and Lagos State has, has now set you know, a standard for other states to follow. Showing determination for the support of female gender-sensitive aspirants, the group advised the women to strive for their involvement in politics rather than complain when they are not involved in the selection of leaders. Women are supposed to be seen and be felt. How would they be seen and, and be felt? It is when they participate in the politics of what is happening within their environment and outside their environment. We cannot sit home and complain that Nigeria is not good, that there's nothing happening in the world when we're not involved. We have to be involved 
to let them know the type of education we want for our children, the kind of medical, ma maternal and child care that we want for our children. We've gone as far as even training and helping both the formal and informal sector. I'm talking women that are not even so literate to teach them how to, you know, update their records and with their PVC and all. And we've also given out mobile phones in different areas to make it easy for access. Women should take their place now to build this nation. We want this nation to change for the best. And the women have the power to do that. They should, they should exercise that the God-given power God has given to them to be thinkers, to be builders, to be molders. They should mold this economy and the time is now. Women for the Southwest Agenda for Siwaji Swagger Group have also promised to unanimously support any female aspirant who declares intention to run for any position irrespective of the zone she comes from. Mary Kanu, TV360, Nigeria. No fewer than 50 widowed farmers have benefited from developing rural widow entrepreneurs in agriculture and digital marketing, investing and technology projects. Under the directive of the Alex and Grace Isignon Foundation, a non-profit organization, and with funding from the French Embassy, the women are drawn from six local government areas in the FCT, as well as Nasarawa and Niger states. According to the president of the foundation, Praise Isignon, the Dream It project provides a free, interactive and engaging platform to help develop the lives of Nigerian widows. We're educating them on climate smart agriculture, we also intend to give them items for their farms. A lot of them mentioned during um, our focus group discussions, they need seeds, materials, etc. So at the end of the training, we will probably provide um, some of that. We intend to give them all smartphones as well, help them set up digital marketing for their businesses um, so they can get across to an increased number of customers and teach them on that. We intend to um, give them financial literacy, um, help them open accounts so they can save money, teach them how to save, how to trade, how to invest so they can get more money for themselves and their farmers, um, their family, sorry. We intend to leave these women empowered that we don't have to keep coming back to help them. They can be able to be sustainable themselves, they can help themselves, they can help their families and they can train other farmers when we leave them. A lot of the widows are not able to help themselves of doing many things. There are a lot of things that they cannot do but with the help of Dramit, they can do many things to help yourself right now. That is why we are here to appreciate the Dramit. And I'm from the community of Paso Village in Gopalata area Council. If they teach you how to fish and you don't know how to carry the fish to the market, the fish will spoil. So from the introduction, we know that those uh, rural women that are here in the FCT, Nasarawa and Niger State will benefit. We will not only produce for FCT or Nasarawa and Niger, but with the help of AGIF, we will go further. Even people from abroad will see it and will patronize us. One of the biggest challenges facing Nigeria is its high unemployment rate. At the end of 2021, it was at 33.3%, among the highest on the continent. Of this percentage, the youth population are the most affected by this crisis. A young Nigerian is, however, looking to solve this challenge by nurturing creative potentials of Nigerian youth to enhance their employability and development. Our correspondent, Abisola Adebayo, has details in this report. With over 200 million population, Nigeria boasts of being the most populous country in West Africa and currently the seventh most populous in the world. But despite this booming population, the country is inched with unemployment crisis. In the center of this crisis is the young population as data from the National Bureau of Statistics reveals that 30.7% of Nigerian youths are currently unemployed. 
Seeing this challenge, a 21-year-old creative art graduate from the University of Lagos, Rita Ezenwalkoro, decided to help young Nigerians, especially the less privileged, and nest their creative potentials, putting them at an advantage in the country's labor market. In 2008, she established the Street Project Foundation. When you expose young people, to the performing arts, music, dance, drama, even visual arts, fine arts, um, that you are able to strengthen their capacities in life skills. And our vision as an organization is to raise a critical mass of transformational youth leaders who make a sustainable living doing what they love. Starting such a project was nearly impossible for a fresh graduate in Nigeria. Ezen Walkoro says she had to go the extra mile to source for funding. From onset, Ezen Walkoro and her team scout for talents in Lagos Metropolis, help them on their skills under the guidance and mentorship of industry experts. We would go on the streets with our phones, record them and upload them on our YouTube channel at the back end. So um, we got thousands and thousands coming in because we're working with talent scouts who lived in Ajegunle, Mushing, Oshodi. So we're actually going to nooks and crannies looking for raw talents. But the talent mentoring alone seems not to capture the essence of Ezen Walker's vision. She and her team decided to introduce other developmental programs that completely captures the process from discovery to setting them up in the labor market. For us, it's not about, you know, a competition. It's about development. And that was how we, we thought about a model called the youth engagement cycle. For us, it was like, how do we create a value chain from discovery to actually employment or actually entrepreneurship, where young people are actually using their art forms, doing what they love and making money out of it. Since then, the foundation has continued to record accelerating growth, getting them several partners and awards across the world. The foundation has since trained over 2,000 Nigerian youths, with 80% of them placed on internship, while 50% secured full-time jobs or started their own businesses after the program. Unemployment is a major menace that threatens to derail Africa's economic growth. Perhaps what's needed to invigorate the economy is the development of the continent's entrepreneurs, which is the core of the Street Project Foundation. Abisola Adebayo, TV360 News. Well, we'll take a break here, but still to come, President uh, Biden appoints first black White House press secretary. Details of this story and more right after this break. In the last three years, we have built a multi-purpose center, which is the envy of all in our constituency. And I can tell you that the people who are living there are already enjoying it. Guy, do you think what this man just said is true? See, I seriously doubt. I'm sure it's one of those that are silly lies. And wait, do you know there's a way to find out if these things he's saying is true or not? Ah. This is the Construct app. It gives people like us a sure way to track implementation of constituency projects. It gives valid and verified information on location of projects, amounts allocated, amounts funded, the level of job done, and even the profiles of concerned legislators. You and I can post directly on this app. Are you serious? This is the GoTo app. If you want to know how our Commonwealth is being expended by the government. Wow. Let's even see if what this man said is true. Show me. The Construct app is developed by other people in Nigeria with support from USAID and is available on both Google Play Store and Apple Store. Eh, and it's true. <laughs> of course, I told you.
Welcome back. Well, in case you missed any of our news bulletin or for more updates, do log on to our website on www.tv360nigeria.com. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube and Google Plus at TV360 Nigeria. On Facebook, we are TV360 Online. Between April 30th to 2nd May 2022, Nigeria has recorded 13 fresh infections of COVID-19. According to an update by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, the new cases were reported in three states. They got stopped infection chat with five cases with Kaduna and Rivers logging four cases each. To date, a total of 255,766 cases have been confirmed, while 249,914 persons have been discharged after recovering from the virus. Meanwhile, 3,143 deaths have so far been recorded in 36 states and the Federal Capital Territory. The Africa Center for Disease Control and Prevention has said 11 countries on the African continent are currently experiencing the fifth wave of the COVID-19 pandemic, addressing journalists during a virtual press briefing. The deputy head of the organization, Hamad Ogwell, said countries experiencing their fifth wave of COVID-19 are seen tally spike higher than previous waves. It is that the South Africa was responsible for the 38% increase in COVID-19 infection numbers on the continent, while in contrast, deaths fell from 59% during the same period. Across Africa, 11.4 million infections and about 252,000 deaths have been recorded since the start of the pandemic. Well, we'll take a break here and return with more stories and business to stay with us. Hello? Yeah, I found your wallet in front of a supermarket. Meet me at Apple Junction. Yes, I'll be waiting for you. Now we find out. <laughs> Two of us. <laughs> Thank you very much, officer. You know, it's surprising that men like you still exist in the police force. Yes, oh, oh, yes. This is just a token <laughs> of my appreciation. Oh, hey, no. You don't need to do this. We're only doing our job. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. God You're bless welcome. you. Now I know police is really my friend. Yes. Friend. Hey. Okay, which came up with this one now? I don't understand. You know your problem. You are greedy. I'm a policeman who is doing his job. All forms of corruption in the force. Not in my country. Corruption not in my country. Welcome back. Mary Cannon now joins us for more stories and business. Over to you, Mary. Well, thank you for that, Shade. Welcome to Business News. The Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, and its allies, known as OPEC Plus, have agreed to stick to last year's plan to gradually release just over 400,000 barrels per day of oil into the market, leaving the deal unchanged. The oil producers group, like in the previous month, said it was boosting crude oil production next month by 432,000 barrels per day during a meeting attended by members of the organization. The meeting also saw the international oil cartel increase Nigeria's production allocation for June to 1.772 million barrels per day, although the country had been underperforming for over a year and was barely able to drill 1.4 million barrels per day. Nigeria's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Geoffrey Oyama, has said that the African continental free trade area will be a game changer as it is going to be the largest free trade area in the world and make doing business much easier for countries with seamless access to 54 markets, which is a huge advantage. The minister who attended the 7th Raisina Dialogue in New Delhi, India, where he took part in two panel discussions, called for stronger ties between Nigeria and India. He emphasized that Nigeria and India have had a long 
long history of very close cooperation and people-to-people -people relations with generations of Indian families living in Nigeria, Nigerian students in India and in the military establishments. We'll take a break and return with a review of the stock market to stay with us. Building on the gains of the previous trading session, the NGX pushed further into the positive territory at the close of trading with the All Share Index getting close to the 51,000 level. Now, the bull is in the celebration mood with the market trading at 0.19%. The mood spread as the market value gained 4 billion naira, and this reflected on the summary of today's trade as 466 million volume of shares were traded in 7,442 deals. Now, the toast of today's trade trade consumer goods and services sectors are glowing, represented by Kevatin and Champions Breweries, with their combined prices increasing by 42 Kobo. Now, the market is still basking in the new highs attributed to renewed interest of local investors, even as the NGX beckons on even more investors. Now, let's now turn our attention to the global scene. It is a different story in the UK, US and Asia, with mixed trading currently going on in the market. The Nikkei is currently trading up at 0.69 percent while the dow jones is trading down at 0.81 percent marking the worst day of the year after the federal reserve's announcement of its plans to increase its benchmark interest rate now this affected the market and that's why we can see that it's trading at 0.81 percent meanwhile FTSE is currently trading also down at 1.54 percent of that's all in stock market review for last day back to you well, many thanks, Mary, for that update. And on the foreign scene, U.S. President Joe Biden has announced Karine Jean Perry as White House press secretary, making history as the first black woman to hold the post. Jean Perry, 44-year-old daughter of Asian immigrants, who replaced Jean Psaki, who was originally expected to serve for only the first year of Biden's term. The U.S. leader thanked the outgoing press secretary, who, according to him, had set the standard for returning decency, respect, and decorum to the White House briefing room. Well, up next is Entertainment Report to News Now. Veteran Nollywood actor Chiwe Talu Agu has recounted his ordeal after surviving a spiritual attack. In a recent video making rounds on the internet, the 66-year-old said that his enemies waged war against his life by sending spiritual arrows of bullets, stones, pins and others into his body objects which were placed on display. According to him, a mirror was placed in his body by the spiritual attackers who tried to see what was keeping him alive despite their efforts, adding that his close relationship with God saved him. Nollywood actress Eniola Badmos has made a plea to men sending her private messages on Instagram to slow down the tempo. The actress made the plea in an Instagram post on Friday, hours after boasting about being the hottest and most talked about celebrity in the movie industry. Badmos added that she is now every man's choice following her recent weight loss and that the attention she has been getting since she got her new body has become overwhelming. And that's all on the entertainment segment of News Now. The 15th edition of the ASO Table Tennis Championship holding at the Gymnastics Hall of the MKO Abiola National Stadium in Abuja continues today with a singles event. Uh, 168 players registered for the men's singles event, while 52 players were listed in women's singles. The national championship also featured cadet category designed to expose some of the young talents. 
Players and officials have lauded the national championship organized by ASO Table Tennis Club to support the development of the sport in the country and give participants the platform to exhibit their skills. The tournament, which holds annually in the Federal Capital Territory of Abuja, has become a major event on the Nigerian Table Tennis Federation calendar with players from different parts of the country competing for honors. A lot of things will be discovered here. In the previous tournament year, we used to discover a lot of talent from this tournament, both cadets, junior and senior. If Nigeria can be having short tournament, it will improve on Nigeria players' skill. We don't need to be running around, being here and there. With tournament, national tournament like this, it's very helpful. This year is to play better than last year. Because I lost at the final last year and this year I'm hoping to play very well, to, to play very well and to win the gold medal if possible for me. And that's the size of our news bulletin. Many thanks for watching. I am Fulashade or Green Day. Bye for now.